I'm about to share with you the root cause to virtually all chronic illness, which over the last few years I've already explained to leading sports people around the world, to celebrities, to astronauts, to billionaires and to many leading doctors. It is so accurate that Swiss Re, one of the world's largest life insurance companies, have started to use my tree of affliction to spread to their clients because they need their clients to live longer so they can make more and more profit. I'm sure if you watch it to the end, you'll know the secret to better health, better life and a better future. What I'm about to tell you at first might appear like a fairy tale, but I promise you by the end of this video, you'll know the one secret that should enable you to enjoy almost immediately better health and a better future. Now, 100 years ago, if I were to make that same promise to you, I would have needed to invent a cure for pneumonia, tuberculosis, diarrhea, polio, typhoid, because those were the causes of early death back a hundred years ago. In those scenarios, you died from these sort of relatively quick sudden deaths. But luckily, advancement in medicine have really brilliantly eradicated those acute diseases to a point where no longer you and I have to worry about them. But what about today? Well, today we worry about dementia, cancer, heart disease, diabetes, obesity, these are all illnesses that a hundred years ago you and I wouldn't have worried about because a hundred years ago the chances of you suffering from any of these terrible chronic diseases, these slow, miserable, life debilitating sort of conditions that overwhelm us today, they weren't around a hundred years ago. Some people say it's because we're living longer. However, this is not the case. In fact, life expectancy in both the UK and America is now on the decrease. Now, I find that shocking. We now have access to clean water, sanitation, the NHS, we have vaccines, we have antibiotics, and we've eradicated all those illnesses that were killing us 100 years ago, but we're not living any longer. So what is the secret to longer health? Well, a critical element of avoiding these modern day illnesses is to understand the principle given in a lecture by a Dr. Gerald Raven at Stanford University way back in 1988. Raven explained how chronic illnesses are not independent, but how they are different expressions of the same underlying condition. He said that patients should not be labelled as having high blood pressure, heart diseases, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Instead, they should be diagnosed with the underlying condition, the very underlying condition that we're about to discuss. An underlying condition that, for my dad, sadly, has developed into type 2 diabetes. And for my mom, it's manifested into Alzheimer's. And for my lovely auntie Avis, it developed into a fatal cancer. But by ignoring the underlying root cause, the current pharmaceutical drugs approach to fixing the pandemic of these modern illnesses just isn't working. And as a result, our NHS and our social care systems are collapsing. And the core fundamental reason being that whilst medication often work well for acute diseases, curing all those things that we were suffering from a hundred years ago, they simply cannot and do not fix chronic illness. And as Bishop Desmond Tutu said, there comes a point where we need to stop just pulling people out of the river. We need to go upstream and find out where they're all falling in. And in our modern world, where they are falling in is the one health secret, the one underlying cause that I'm now going to share with you. You may remember a word that we learned at school in science called homeostasis. It describes the body system as being in a, and staying in balance. Now here's the crunch and the reason why many nations around the world are facing this tsunami with these modern diseases. You see, when homeostasis is challenged too much for too long, then we get sick. Now, the one health secret I'm about to tell you, and I'll explain a little bit later why it's a secret, is a simple biological process that links virtually all of these chronic illnesses together. Let me start with a simple fact. The average adult has five liters, that's about eight pints of blood in their body. And one of the key tasks of homeostasis is to tightly regulate how much sugar we have in this five liters of blood. Do you know what the normal blood sugar level should be? Don't worry if you don't, most people don't. The answer is between four and six millimoles per liter in our blood. In plain English, that's the equivalent of just one small teaspoon of sugar in your vast 60,000 miles of blood vessels, arteries, veins, and capillaries. Yes, to stay in homeostasis and to enjoy better health, and a healthy future, your body must try and maintain just one teaspoon of sugar in your entire blood network. A network that's long enough to go around the world twice. Thankfully, 
homeostasis tries really hard to keep your blood sugar at this one teaspoon level. Why does it do that? Well, because if your homeostasis begins to lose control of your sugar level, even a small increase of just half a teaspoon, you'd be diagnosed as a type 2 diabetic. And at three teaspoons in your network of blood, it's often fatal. That's it with the numbers for now. Five litres of blood and you should only have five grams of sugar in the whole amount. That's the goal. So how do we avoid diabetes and early death? Well, to keep our body sugar level at just one teaspoon, our body relies on a hormone called insulin. A hormone, by the way, is a, a messenger that sends one message from one part of the body to another. Virtually every cell in the body responds to the hormone insulin. And along with regulating our blood sugar, insulin also promotes the creation of body fat. Why? Because for most of the past two million years, our primal ancestors only ate lots and lots of sugar via fruit in the autumn. And it's critical to understand this. When we eat sugary food or food that turns into sugar, insulin is released from our pancreas to control our blood sugar level. And it switches the body into fat storing mode. To do this in our blood, insulin travels around the body, telling the cells to open their doors and take the sugar out of our bloodstream into the cells. This allows the blood sugar levels to return to normal. However, in the modern world where blood sugar levels are constantly being challenged by both sugary foods and foods that ultimately turn into sugar, gradually over time, your cells and my cells become overstuffed. And overstuffed cells don't want to open up their doors so easily. So instead of a small amount of insulin politely knocking at the door, the pancreas now has to release more and more and more insulin to get the cell doors open, trying to force the sugar into the cells. So how do you avoid both hyperinsulinemia and later in life developing high blood sugar levels? An internal war that we're gonna call from now on insulin resistance. For hundreds of thousands of years, our primal ancestors had no issue with insulin resistance. They never developed either hyperinsulinemia or high blood sugar levels. They ate fruit only in the autumn. It turned to sugar and to get them through the winter, insulin was summoned to store that sugar from the fruit as body fat. Perfect solution. You see, a small spike in sugar levels at just one or two weeks a year would not pose a problem for homeostasis at all. Its partnership with insulin back then, in fact, for the last two million years has worked perfectly. But unfortunately, in our modern world of ultra-processed foods, foods high in sugar and fruit and fruit juices which are available 24-7 all year round, our food environment has been hacked and we are truly suffering for what I call the plate of prosperity. And the situation is really, really bad. In fact, research has uncovered that only 12% of adults in America are described as metabolically healthy. In other words, almost nine out of 10 adults now have an issue with insulin resistance. And research is also just suggesting that here in the UK, we've got a similar health tragedy. The secret to experiencing better health is to understand that insulin resistance is caused in the main by a modern diet, one which no longer is suitable for human consumption. And that insulin resistance drives virtually all chronic diseases that may prevent you from a better, healthier future. Nowadays, most people are aware that sweets, ice creams, fizzy pops, cakes, and all those sorts of things are loaded with sugar. But pair this with your newfound understanding of insulin resistance, and you can kind of probably appreciate how these foods really challenge your homeostasis. But now, let's look at a few food items that also drive insulin resistance that might surprise you. I want to introduce you to these charts. These are not my charts, they're by a brilliant doctor called Dr. David Unwin and his team. Take a 12 inch bread roll, that can turn into 15 teaspoons of sugar. Remember your body can only at any one time have around one to one and a half teaspoons of sugar. If the amount of sugar in a bread roll or a bowl of rice shock you, then let's now look at some breakfast staples that many people currently feel are probably healthy options. I know I did. And look at that, a typical English breakfast turns into so much sugar. And yet these are breakfasts that certainly I did feed in my kids. I used to think these were healthy breakfasts. Now looking at these charts, you can see how a healthy looking sort of, or certainly sold as a healthy breakfast, can affect your blood sugar levels. An average breakfast of so-called healthy stuff 
as much as teaspoon, 16 teaspoons in one serving. Alternately, if you ate, say, eggs and bacon and had a cup of black coffee or water or tea instead of the fruit juice, then there would be virtually no sugar whatsoever in your breakfast. Now let's add some more staple foods to the list with a chart I, I sort of adapted from my own book, Fat and Furious. Have a look here. If you swapped out, say, regular rice for homemade cauliflower rice, you can actually even buy it now in the supermarkets, you will see how it changes things dramatically in the amount of sugar you're taking in. And if you think, well, I don't know how to make the cauliflower rice, go to our app. There are dozens of cauliflower rice recipes. Or let's say taking away your regular spaghetti and your regular pasta and using what they call fibrohydrates, which is not made, uh, doesn't turn into sugar, it's fiber. You'll see how, again, you can completely cut down the amount of sugar you're consuming. So that's it for the charts for now. Uh, all my books, our website will tell you a lot, lot more ways of cutting down the amount of sugar by just simple swaps. Swapping your cereals uh, for your bacon and eggs, swapping your pasta for the fibrohydrates, swapping your rice uh, 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 for cauliflower rice. Now, don't get me wrong, consumed infrequently in smaller portions, most of the foods we just talked about, the bread, the pasta, the rice, wouldn't cause problems for healthy individuals. They just wouldn't. However, this isn't the case for nine out of 10 adults in the West who, after a short overnight fast, because you can't eat while you're sleeping, the onslaught of cereals, orange juice, toast, uh, and then after breakfast, followed maybe by a sandwich at school or at work, then maybe a pasta and a spaghetti for lunch, and then with the evening, uh, you know, more rice, more pizzas, and so on. This onslaught of sugar, then this onslaught of insulin is causing us insulin resistance, which is linked to all the chronic illnesses we're worried about. And also, if you're trying to lose weight, remember, with a body that's full of insulin, it cannot burn fat because insulin's job is to store sugar and, and, and things that turn into sugar as body fat. You see, you can't burn fat, you can't lose weight, you can't beat obesity while you've got elevated insulin. That's just biology. And insulin is such a powerful fat storing force of nature that the average British adult since the year I was born, just 50 something years ago, has added two and a half stone to their body weight. In just 56 years, we've become two and a half stone heavier because we are eating things that create insulin resistance. And insulin resistance isn't just associated to obesity and diabetes. It's also associated to Alzheimer's, to certain cancers in particular, prostate cancer and breast cancer, to diabetes, to high blood pressure, and then other things like gout, migraines, PCOS, infertility, the list goes on. I wanted to, and if we go back a little bit, some time ago, I wanted to find a way to illustrate this in sort of a drawing to make it like easy for people to understand. So I created this tree to illustrate how insulin resistance links all these diseases together. It's such an accurate reflection that many doctors now use my image at health conferences and on social media. So part of the good news, I guess, is that the word is starting to spread. All these illnesses are simply just branches of the same tree, the tree being insulin resistance. They have all the same root causes, but manifest in different ways. And it's important to say that some of these diseases may have other contributing factors and can also be caused by uh, stress, lack of sleep, lack of exercise, vegetable oils, which aren't made of vegetables, by the way. How accurate is my tree? Well, research has shown that insulin resistance increases the risk of, of Alzheimer's by five times, cancer by up to 12 times, and death from cardiovascular disease by almost six times. If you add all those together, that makes us 21 times more likely to get at least one of the major diseases that cut life short in the UK. And with cancer research now predicting the one in two people alive today will at some point suffer from cancer. The fact that we are so many times more likely to get cancer if we don't address insulin resistance, well, I think this just says we have to look at this in a serious, serious way. Way. If it's not dealt with, avoiding the likes of type 2 diabetes or Alzheimer's or cancer becomes almost impossible. Regrettably, the current state of our healthcare system neither identifies nor addresses hyperinsulinemia as a hormone-related issue, in the same way as it does, say, with other hormonal imbalances like uh, thyroid imbalances and cortisol. Instead, tragically, we wait 
until somebody develops type 2 diabetes before taking action. Overlooking the potential havoc wrecked on that individual because of insulin resistance over potentially two, three, four, five decades. There is, however, a silver lining. Insulin resistance can be both prevented and reversed, and quite rapidly, often within just a few weeks. How would you do this? Well, you'd need to swim against the tide and make changes, or maybe maybe small, to your modern day diet. And maybe, if necessary, you might have to look at your exercise. Not lots of it, but some exercise. And if you're not sleeping well, we might have to look at your sleep. But the main thing is to address the food. And by addressing that, you can address insulin resistance. And even if you already have type two diabetes, within weeks, it's now possible to reverse it. And when I say reverse it, some of the people we help reverse it through our courses actually come off all their medication. And for others that might not have sort of diabetes yet, but have started to develop insulin resistance, we can help them lose body weight. We can reverse blood pressure. We can help people that are suffering migraines and just help people to feel generally much better. And in my view, and the view of many leading doctors, it's simply naive not to consider insulin resistance as the leading cause of the devastating decrease in both lifespan and health span in the UK. And for me, this constitutes the most sort of glaring error of our NHS. And it's the primary reason for people not living long, healthy lives. And if avoiding chronic illness is that simple, and it's been known since 1988, why haven't you already been told about it? Why is it such a secret? Well, sadly, it's because it's an inconvenient truth for both big food companies and the pharmaceutical corporations who are at risk of losing billions and billions of pounds in profit. So they're hell bent to make sure that you don't know about insulin resistance. So while your GP and the NHS are overwhelmed trying to help people who've already got chronic illnesses, illnesses most likely caused by insulin resistance, how do you at home prevent it or reverse it? But well, that's where health results come in. You see, there are five markers of insulin resistance, something that's also known as metabolic syndrome. You need to know the ratio between your waist and your height. You need to know your blood pressure. You need to know how much sugar's in your blood level, called your blood glucose level. We need to know how much fat's inside your blood, called your triglycerides level. We need to know how much of the good cholesterol you've got, the HDL cholesterol. So five markers. And the one of the things we specialize in at Health Results is providing those measurements. We call it the HRM metabolic score. And we take those five measurements, or you take them at home, we'll quickly show you how to do that. And you then add those measurements into our app, which has been written by leading doctors, and it gives you a score. Once you get that score, we on our website, you put the score in, it's between zero and 100, and it will tailor make a dietary plan based on your score. Completely, completely free. One device that does your blood pressure, does your triglycerides, your HDL, your glucose in one device. It's revolutionary. It's the only one in the world at the moment that does all of these measurements. And then combining that with the really powerful app, you can then tailor your dietary plans to your own needs. This effectively, that score, zero to 100, zero says you're very, at, the, at this moment, current state, very insulin resistant. 100 means you're very insulin sensitive, so very, very good. Uh, so what we try and do via the score, you maybe test it once a month and see how it's improving. And as you make those lifestyle changes, as you make those dietary changes, all of those markers start to almost in parallel improve. And as you improve that score, the likelihood of you developing insulin resistance, or if you are already a low score, reversing it so your body becomes insulin sensitive, gets better and better as you make the changes. You can't sort of manage what you can't measure. And this tool helps you measure it. And like I say, within weeks, many people taking the score, looking on the website, the dietary advice for that score, tend to see improvements really quickly. I wanna help you reverse or prevent insulin resistance. And therefore, in parallel, greatly diminish your chances of developing one of those chronic diseases. If you've enjoyed this video, why not subscribe to my channel uh, and give it the thumbs up, of course, and uh, do go over to our website and get your HRM 
kit is on special offer at the moment. Really take control, be the captain of your own ship. Uh, also, you'll find on our website courses to reverse diabetes, courses to reverse obesity, and lots of free advice to help you live healthier and happier, and to, of course, reverse or prevent insulin resistance.